Welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn how to program our robot to use the color sensor to follow a line. So before we begin, we have to attach the color sensor to your robot, and it needs to be close to the object being measured, but not touching it. So here's an example of what mine looks like. We will be using two new blocks for this project. The color sensor, right here, which is located in the sensor tab, the yellow sensor tab, here's the color sensor we'll be using. And we'll also be using a math block, which can be found in the red tab under the data, data operations. This will be the math tab, we, uh, the math block we use. But before we begin, we have to look at how to use the color sensor in this project. We're going to do this by measuring the reflective light intensity of both the table and the line and even in between. So what you should know is reflective light intensity mode measures the total light entering the sensor. That also includes the LED light on the sensor itself and the light in the room. So let me show you how to measure reflective light using the color sensor. So here we are in our program, our LEGO program, LEGO Mindstorm software. Down in port view, if you notice, you, my color sensor is hooked up to port 3. So when I put my color sensor, as you can see, on the blue line itself, I get a reading of 12. That's how much um, light is being measured. It is in percentage, so 0 to 100. 0 is very dark and 100 is very light. So you can see I'm using like a dark blue so and I'm at 12 percent of light is being measured so that means it's almost very dark. Now if I moved it to the white table you'll see my number goes dramatically higher. My number goes all the way up to 82 which tells you that it's very light. If I wanted to go somewhere in between I can have it go to my light my color sensor sit in between the blue and the white, and it reads approximately 28%. Uh, so that's how you could read um, the difference in the light being measured, the reflective light being measured, and this will come in handy as we begin our programming. All right, let's begin to create our program. The first thing we need to do, like always, is we need to name our program so let's name this program following the line. And then we're going to save our project. Let's do file, save project. Let's call this color sensor. That way in the future, if we do any other projects that require the use of the color sensor, we can save our program in this um, color sensor project. So let's hit the save button. All right, so for this program, we're only going to use four blocks that will make the bot follow the line I created on my table. Okay, so the first block we're going to use is we're going to go down to the Flow Control tab and pull out a loop block. So let's attach the loop block. So we want the program to go on and on until we manually stop it, and that's what this loop block will allow us to do. Okay, the next block we need is a color sensor, and I told you in the beginning of this uh, tutorial that if you went to sensor, you could find your color sensor. So we're going to attach that inside the loop, and then we're going to need that math block we talked about. That's in data operations, and it's this one right here. We're going to pull this next, right next to the color sensor. And last, we need our move steering block which is found in the action tab. So we're going to attach that at the very end of our project. So the first thing we need to do is we need to work with the color sensor block. As I explained to you in the beginning, the way that we're going to have it measure the line in the table is through um, the reflective light intensity. We're going to have it measure it. So we need to change that in the color sensor block, we need to pull this down and we need to say measure 
by reflective light intensity, not by color and not by ambient light, by reflective light intensity. So as you can see, I changed it. So that's set up. So the next thing we have to work on is the math block. So the math block, the first thing we want to do is it's on add. We want to change it to advanced because we're going to use an order of operations to help direct the robot to follow the line. Okay, so here's the operation we're going to use. We're not going to use the one that's already in there. We're going to change that. So let's take that out. And the order of operation we're going to use is parentheses A minus B, close the parentheses, multiply by C. So A is going to be the ideal position, which is going to be halfway on the line. So right now, my bot is sort of on the end of the blue line and almost near the table and it's got a, a reading of 38 you can see that in my port view so that's going to be our what we call our sweet spot so we're going to plug that number into variable a so it's going to be 38 that's where we would like our robot to always be. So for the B variable, we're going to use the measurements from the light sensor. So to do this, we need to go over here and we need to attach the data wire right here from here, from here, oops, excuse me, sorry, from here to variable B. So again, I attached a data wire from the color sensor reading to the B variable. So the equation right now stands as parentheses A minus B, so that's the ideal position is A, minus the measurements from the light sensor, which is B, multiplied by C, which is set to zero right now. We need to change the C from zero to another number because anything times zero is zero. And the robot won't do anything. So for C, we need to plug in a negative number. And I first tried negative one, but I found that it didn't follow the line well when there was a sharp turn. So I needed to use a higher negative number so that it would be able to make a sharper turns. So I ended up plugging in the value negative three. You can try negative one and see if it will catch your turns. If not, try negative two and move your way up. I found that negative three was a good position for me to be in. So the only thing we have left to do is to change some of the steering in this block. So we want the motors to run continuously, so we're going to pull this down and choose on. And the only other thing I want to change right here is the speed. Right now the speed's set to 50, which is not, it's half the power of what it could be, which is at 100. But I want this to be kind of pretty slow, so it can follow the line a little better and be able to take the measurements. Um, if you did it at 50, it might not be able to stay on the line that quick. So let's change, uh, it might get off the line a little. So let's choose 15. And the only other thing I want to do is I want to put a data wire from the sum to the steering. So here's how the equation looks. The ideal position is the variable in A, which is 38. And the measurements from the light sensor are plugged into the variable B. So let's just say the light sensor read 48. So here it read 48, we're gonna plug in 48 right here. So according to the order of operations, we do A minus B first. So 38 minus 48 gives you a negative 10. And then we would do negative 10 multiplied by negative 3 would give you 30. 
because two negatives equal a positive. So our total would be plugged in over here, which would be 30. So 30 would go into our steering, the total. And if you have a positive number in your steering, you're going to turn to the right. Now, if my number came out negative, it would turn to the left. So we're going to take this information and use it to help us change the steering using the math block. So that's what the math block did. It was able to help us change the steering, as you can see. So let's test this and see how the robot responded to the program and if it stayed onto the line. So it looks like our robot is able to follow the line relatively well, even when there are sharp turns, as you can see. So I would encourage you to continue playing around with the program and maybe changing up uh, different line shapes and seeing what else you can do with it. I hope you enjoyed this video.